It's a question I ask myself all the time when I'm about to cook something. Should I use butter or oil? And the answer is, well, it depends. This is Minute Food. People use butter and oil for all sorts of things in the kitchen. But here, we're gonna focus on which one to add to a pan to cook your food. And to make things simple, we'll be talking fried eggs. Mostly because if I'm going to have to cook something over and over for this video, it's gonna be something easy, cheap, and delicious. But also because eggs are a really good test case for a lot of what I'll be talking about. But even if eggs don't egg sight you, hang tight because everything you'll learn here is knowledge that you can also apply to cooking other foods. There are a few main reasons we cook with fat in the first place. To add flavor, to transfer heat from the pan to the food, and to keep that food from sticking. Butter and oil differ in all three of these jobs, and it basically boils down to what they're made of. Butter and oil both consist mostly of super common fat molecules called triglycerides. But while many cooking oils consist almost exclusively of these fat molecules, butter contains more other compounds as well. Water, which actually isn't that important here because it evaporates before the butter is hot enough to cook in, but also proteins, sugars, enzymes, and so-called free fatty acids, the building blocks of fats that aren't bound up in fat molecules. And it's this extra stuff that makes butter behave differently than oil when you're cooking, at least differently than refined cooking oils like vegetable or canola oil. Unrefined oils like olive and sesame oil also contain additional compounds. So they actually act more like butter when you're cooking. And ghee and clarified butter, which is butter with a lot of that extra stuff removed, actually behave more like refined oils. So keep that in mind as we forge ahead. Let's start with the first reason we cook with fat, to add flavor. Many of those extra compounds in butter are aromatic, which lend flavor to butter, and anything you cook in butter. Most cooking oils, though, don't have enough of those extra ingredients to add much flavor. Remember, less refined oils are an exception. So if you're a purist and want your eggs to taste like, well, eggs, use a neutral oil. But if you do want to add flavor, go with a big pat of butter. On to the next reason we cook with fat, to transfer heat from your pan to your food. And both butter and oil are really good at this. But somewhere between 300 and 350 degrees Fahrenheit, those extra ingredients in butter start breaking down and producing less desirable, potentially unhealthy compounds, as well as smoke. That's why this temperature is known as butter's smoke point. So when you're cooking with butter, you probably want to stick to temps below 350 or so. While that's plenty of heat to cook eggs, it isn't enough to create those really crispy, lacy edges some people love. For those, you'll need oil. Since cooking oils contain fewer of those additional components, they don't start breaking down until much higher temperatures. The smoke points of some oils top 500 degrees. So if you are looking to really crisp up an egg, you'll want to choose oil over butter. Then there's the matter of keeping food from sticking. By forming a barrier that prevents the protein in an egg from chemically bonding with the metal in a pan, both butter and oil do lessen the risk of sticking. But butter generally does a better job than oil does. See, most foods that we cook, like eggs, are mostly water. And water and fat don't like each other. So when you add an egg to hot oil, the egg and the oil actually repel each other slightly, leaving only the thinnest barrier of oil between the food and the metal of the pan. Butter, though, is rich in a few different types of compounds, like phospholipids and milk proteins, that have parts that are hydrophilic, they're attracted to water, and parts that are lipophilic, they're attracted to fat. These compounds keep the watery egg and the fatty butter in close contact, maintaining a nice, thick butter barrier between the food and the pan, and preventing bonding between them. So if you want to be totally sure your eggs won't stick, butter is the better choice. I want to briefly mention one other issue, health. You probably know that the saturated fat in butter can cause health problems. But maybe surprisingly, there's still a healthy scientific debate about the size of that effect. My take on this, based on the current science out there, is basically everything in moderation. So I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty details. But in case you want to dive into the health aspect of the butter versus oil debate, I'll put some jumping off points in the description. In the end, there is not a universal answer to the question of butter versus oil. When you're cooking eggs, or anything else, it really comes down to what you're looking for. 
do you want to add flavor or not? How important is crispiness? How delicate or likely to stick is what you're cooking? If you are still stuck, there is one additional option. Go half seas with both butter and oil. You'll get some of the flavor and slickness of butter. And although mixing butter with oil won't increase the butter's smoke point, it will dilute the compounds that break down at low temps, enabling you to cook at somewhat higher temps than butter alone. Talk about the best of both worlds. You all know that I value my privacy. So when it comes to my online presence, I definitely think it's worth being super careful. Surfshark VPN, the sponsor of this video, keeps your online identity safe by encrypting all of the information sent between your device and the internet. Working at a coffee shop? Surfshark secures all your data to keep you safe on public Wi-Fi, which can be a goldmine for hackers. Worried about trackers and malware? Surfshark's clean web feature blocks all that nasty stuff. Traveling and can't watch your favorite TV show? Change your virtual location back to your home country and you won't miss an episode. And Surfshark never monitors, tracks, or stores what you do online. Phew! Not that I'm doing anything weird, but you know. So check out what Surfshark can do for you. If you sign up with the code MINUTEFOOD, you will get an extra three months for free. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee, so if you've ever wondered about a VPN, this is the time to try it. Get started at the link in the description.